following film has not yet been rated. Viewer discretion is advised. Today we will be discussing the Taurus. T-O-R-U-S. Taurus. Now, my lovely assistant here will show you a bit more about the Taurus and what it looks like from other angles. Ooh. Ooh. It's magicalicious. Oh my god, it went down. Okay, the Taurus. The Taurus, as we see, looks sort of like a donut, which is why some people call it the donut curve. I am not one of those people. Now, today we will be analyzing the partial derivatives of our Taurus function, which looks like this. The general function is z squared plus r minus the square root of x squared plus y squared squared equals little r squared. Now, we will put in some nice numbers like r, how about 1 and 2? So, z squared equals 2 minus x squared plus y squared squared equals 1. And then we'll just move it on to the other side so that we have z isolated. So z equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 2 minus root x squared plus y squared squared. Now, I'll only be looking at the positive one at first, but you can quickly figure out the rest of it by just taking the negative of everything. Because when we take the derivatives, you can teach, treat the negative like a constant. So, first we will be taking the partial derivative with respect to x. That's an ugly d, but I don't really care. So d of f with respect to x. And that becomes, we will use the chain rule repeatedly. So we'll treat this guy as a one half instead of a square root, since that makes it easier to work with. And now we derive the case. And it's just relatively boring and tedious. So I will make funny puns to keep you occupied while I write out all of the steps. Whoops. Oh, and times because of the chain rule. We can't forget the chain rule because that would be bad. The stuff in the inside, the derivative of that. Can someone erase that board over there because I'm going to need it? Thank you, lovely assistant Aosha. There are so many lovely assistants, it's hard to keep track. I'm sure you've all heard the story of the Taurus and the hare, right? That was a joke, you can laugh. <laughs> all right, and that the one goes to zero when we take the derivative of it, so it's just negative two minus negative two times two minus three x squared plus y squared times the derivative of root x squared plus y squared. Yeah, so actually I decided that if I were to be a mathematician who is involved in law enforcement, my favorite function would be the torus because you know it looks like a donut and cops love donuts. Everyone knows that. Well, you know on the subject of donuts, Yoda once famously said in Star Wars Episode Five, "Do or donut, there is no try." That was another joke. You can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and our derivative is done, so we'll simplify. Uh, let's see. What can I get rid of? There is a negative somewhere that I can cancel out that, oh yeah, I forgot the negative here. And negatives cancel out too. So our entire thing becomes and on top we have, what do we have on top? We want that to be equal to zero because then when it's equal to zero, we can take the partial derivative and that'll get our relative maximums and such. So, and obviously, if we just did the partial derivative with respect to y, we just change this to a y, you know, y. And then if we wanted to go back to x, we could just draw another line and make it x. So anyway, this stuff, if it's zero, we're gonna have a really big problem because that would mean we're dividing by zero and only Chuck Norris can divide by zero 
and I'm not Chuck Norris, and I can't roundhouse kick, so we're going to pretend that that's not zero, because otherwise that would be bad. So in order to get this to be zero, we need this stuff to be zero, which means that we have a simultaneous equation since we want both the partial derivative with respect to y and the partial derivative with respect to x to be zero. So there are numerous solutions to this equation. Actually, infinitely many solutions. Do you know Chuck Norris counted to infinity twice? So anyway, our, we solve this guy first, and there are going to be different solutions. When x equals 0, or x squared plus y squared equals 2. Similarly, this guy has solutions y equals 0, or x squared plus y squared equals 2, or the square root of that. So now we just look at the cases. If x is 0, then we don't care if that's true or not, since this guy is true. So all we care about is this. So if x is 0, we have the solution 0, 0, or when this is true and this is true. But if this is true, then this is true. So we'll just cover that in a different case. If this guy is true, but this guy is not true, then that means this guy is automatically true. So we win. So all the solutions where x squared plus y squared equals the square root of that equals 2, we have the solutions. So and then similarly, even if we took the derivative, the partial derivatives with the negative guy, this would just have a giant negative in front. And we all know negative 0 is 0, or we should all know that, because if not, we have problems. So then the solutions will still remain the same. So our solutions will be when x and y are 0, or when x squared plus y squared equals 4. Now, when x and y are 0, we get our hole somewhere in the middle of the donut, and we all know that if there's a hole in the middle of a donut, it's a jelly donut. But we're talking about a glazed donut. So 0, 0 is really not a solution. And we can test that by plugging it in here, and we get 2 minus z squared plus 2 squared equals 1. So z squared equals negative 3. So, and since a square can't be negative, our donut clearly has no filling. So the other solutions are when x squared plus y squared, the square root of that is 2, which is actually this top part right here. And similarly, lovely assistant, the bottom. bottom part right here. So the maximum and minimum occur on that circle, and they will actually both, that will cover all of the relative maximums and the relative, relative minimums, which also happens to be the extrema. So to wrap up, we just use calculus to show that the top of the donut is the highest part of the donut, and the bottom of the donut is the bottom and lowermost. Thank you.